Okay, you've got your center. I now want you to pick any two points on the circumference. So I'm gonna pick this spot over here and this spot over here. So pick a couple of spots on the circumference of your circle. Okay. Once you've done that, I'm gonna use a fancy word here. I want you to use this arc along the bottom. Let's give it a name, let's call it PQ. I want you to use arc PQ to subtend, which is just the fancy word for make or form. I want you to use arc PQ to subtend an angle at the center and also an angle at the circumference. Okay? So for instance, uh, you can only can subtend one angle at the center, okay? Because the center is only in one spot. So there you go. I just subtended angle POQ, okay? It's been subtended by arc PQ. There it is, there's only one. Uh, I have a few choices though. Actually, I have an infinite number of choices for the angles I can form in the circumference. So you can put them any way you like. I'm gonna put my one somewhere like over here. That'll do. Like so. And you can see it's kinda, kinda leaning over a little bit. Okay. Now, you don't have Protractors there mostly, um, protractors for measuring angles, yeah? Um, but what I want you to notice, and you can sort of see it by eye, and you can confirm it when you, if you do actually have a protractor. I want you to have a look at this angle that we subtended at the center, compared to the angle subtended at the circumference. Does anyone know what the relationships between these are? Yeah. So let's call this one R. Okay, so the angle at the center, and this is in fact the way that we will state it, the angle at the center is, Nadi, you said double, right? Double? You could say twice, but double is fine as well. Is double the angle at the circumference And even though I think that's sort of enough to unambiguously within this context describe what you're talking about, I think it's a little more descriptive to add one more phrase at the end, which is standing on the same arc. Because that's how we constructed these, remember? So what we're suggesting is this angle, twice the size of this one. Eric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that is a great question. If, for example, I'll just draw one over here. Mm. Oh, that's not the center. That's the center. So say something like this, for instance. Like that, yeah. So one of the wonderful things about this, and the reason why I've stated it in this way, is that this is still true. It's still true. It, the proof that we'll use will end up being slightly different, because as you can see, these do look like different configurations, don't they? But we can still do it just as well as we can do it over here. So again, I'm going to try and walk you through. I'll let you have a one minute head start this time because this time I just sort of gave it to you. Maybe two minutes, I'm generous. If what we're trying to prove is that this angle is double this angle, and I've already suggested to you that within circles, constructions are often very, very helpful. What could you do to get towards something like this? Just draw something, nothing is wrong. But obviously when you start to put too many drawings on there, it just gets clouded. If you think you've got something, call me over. I don't want to spoil it for everyone, so have a shot. All right, it's perfectly fine if you're not done yet. The point of this is not necessarily to get the answer, but to stretch your muscles and think geometrically. It's quite different to doing, say, calculus, right? Okay, I'm just gonna shuffle this O over a little bit because um, I'm gonna make a construction. Now, like I said, there's a, a few different ways to do this. There's lots and lots of ways to do this. Eric just showed me one that I'm going to come to in a second. I'm gonna show you my preferred proof because I think it's, it's quite nice and quick. Uh, it's only my, m minor difference, okay? So I made a construction, RO, but I didn't construct the radius. I actually went a little bit further. You don't have to go much further. You don't even have to go to the opposite side of the circle. You just have to go past the center. Here's what I'm going to do. Having done that, You've got, maybe you see it, right? Um, you've got the same situation here as you do over here in that you've got all these isosceles triangles magically appearing. Are you getting a hint yet? In circles, you get lots of isosceles triangles because you have radii everywhere, right? So they're very easy to find. So for that reason, just like over there, 
If I have a look at, say, this angle up the top, it's going to be equal to... Have I got enough names on here? I do. Can you tell me the name of the angle it's equal to? R, RPO, right? Because here are the radii. And so equal angles are opposite equal sides. Yep. By the same logic, I can look at this thin triangle over here. And if this is beta, then this guy down here is also beta. Okay? Now, you have a couple of choices from here. Um, I know where Eric went is that he went to these angles inside the triangles, which is perfectly fine. You can find out what they are, angle sum of triangle. But there's an even more direct way to get to this angle that I'm interested in, right? By the way, I've called this angle alpha and this angle beta. So in theory, what should this angle be equal to? If, if my property is right, what should it be equal to? It should be equal to exactly double, alpha plus beta, which is... 2 alpha plus 2 beta, you, you agree? Watch. Angles, they're related to this one. What's the relationship between alpha and alpha and this guy right here? This one in here, this one in here. I'll give you a clue. It's outside the triangle. We have a word for outside. It's a fancy technical word. It just means outside. Exterior, right? The exterior angle of a triangle is equal to what? Think, think. The exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the opposite two interior angles. Do you see that? Because really what you're doing is what you were saying, but twice. This is 180 minus these guys, but this is 180 minus that because it's on the opposite side of a straight line. So you can just go directly there. This guy is going to be 2 alpha because the exterior angle of a triangle, this is your reason, equals the sum of the opposite two interior angles. Okay. And um, by the way, I don't remember that wording. I remember the picture, and then the words just kind of come from there. Okay, I don't remember this wording either. I just look at the shape. Same logic. What's this guy in here, nestled in here? It's going to be 2 beta, and literally for exactly the same reason. And you're done. That's 2 alpha plus 2 beta. Uh, double the angle at the circumference as required. Okay.